Hey, hi all, welcome to my channel DevOps Mela. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about SAML and SSO login. Let's talk about the agenda. So, uh, in this video tutorial, we'll talk about what is SAML. We'll understand the SAML architecture. Practically, we'll set up SAML SSO through IDP. We'll configure AWS IAM role and identity providers to access it through IDP Jump Cloud. So let's talk about what is SAML. So SAML is an security assertion markup language. It is an open standard that allows identity providers to pass authorization credential to service providers. So this is a typical SAML definition. So in short, what, what it means is that you can use one set of credentials to log in into many different websites or application, I would say. Okay, SAML uses extensive markup language. It's a standardized communication between identity providers and service providers. SAML enables single sign-on, a term that means user can log in once and those same credentials can be used to log in in other service providers too. So in short, in your organization, you could have multiple applications and you could be using multiple passwords. So using SSO, you can mitigate those issues. You can use one single credential to log in on all your applications. Okay. So many times we talked about identity providers and service provider. What typically th that is. So an identity provider is a system entity that creates, maintains, and manages identity information of the users. In typical word, you can take it as AD, Active Directory. You can even integrate SAML using an active directory. I don't, I won't talk much about that, but for this video tutorial, we, we will be using Jump Cloud, Jump Cloud as an identity provider. And a service provider is someone, a company which allows its subscriber to access its service. So in our case, we'll be using AWS as a service provider. So using Jump Cloud, SSO will log in into AWS. Okay. Well, let's talk about the SAML architecture. SAML is basically dependent on three parties. The first one is the principal, the users, I would say, the identity provider, and the service provider. The identity provider is someone who manages the user information, and the service provider could be an individual or entity that provides service to the another party okay so let's understand the workflow how typically the SAML architecture works the first step the user gets authenticated to the service provider using a single factor or a multi-factor authentication okay the second step the identity provider issues a SAML token to the user with assertion about the user identity so the identity provider issues a token, a SAML token, and it attach some user identity information with it. Okay. In the third step, the user browser is redirected from the identity provider to the location of the service provider. Okay. The service provider then inspect the SAML token and it contains to determine validity based on the trust relation between the identity providers. Then the service provider provide access to the all, all online application based on SAML assertion statements included in the token. So before we proceed with the practical, let's talk about what is a SAML assertion and what it contains. So it's nothing but it contains all the information necessary for a service provider to confirm user identity. It includes the assertion time and when it was issued. And the trust relation between the IDPs and the service provider is established using X509 certificate. Okay, let's uh, start with the practical and understand this flow. So as a IDP, I would be using Jump Cloud. So let's go to Jump Cloud. And as a service provider, I would be using AWS. Okay, so Let's jump on console.jumpcloud.com slash sign up. Being a new user, you have to sign up. 
so I'm doing a sign up right now I'm using my email ID rohitks at devopsmela.com click next just fill this form and you'll be able to get administrative access on jump cloud so as you say try now 10 users free forever that's why I'm using jump cloud and it, it has a good GUI as well so it is easy to configure so I'm already logged in on my jump cloud console so the first step first I'll be creating an application so so I'll be using AWS as my endpoint so let's create an AWS application in jump cloud first step there are list of application pre pre-build there are AWS there are Google so you can use the G suite so using this you can log into any Google application if your application is not listed you can use a custom SAML app so let's work with AWS let me configure AWS so test I'll name it as DevOps Mela SAML okay description if you want to describe I don't want to change the logo and if you have a XML like in more uh, XML file then you can upload it directly from here IDP URL this is very important because you you would be using this URL to log in so I'll name it as DevOps Mela okay and if you want to give your user information the first name and last name you can add it over here if you want to add an email address and if you want to add multiple ADPs multiple attributes you can add attributes as well as from here okay you can add attributes based on your requirement so this constant attribute these are the session duration and these are the ARN information. We'll come back to this constant attributes because we need to change certain things. Okay, so that's it. And if you want to add some group attributes, you can add it from here. Coming back to the user group, uh, I have already created a SAML group. So let's add that too. So there's a warning that IDP URL cannot be shared across application and the URL is not editable after creation. So let's continue because I've already edited my IDP URL. So it's been created and if you see, you're getting an option to download public certificate, which is not needed in our tutorial. So we'll just quickly export the metadata information of this. So I'll click on SSO and I'll click on export metadata information. Okay. So we have successfully created an application in Jump Cloud, and I'll talk about what this metadata will be used for and the groups which I've already created. If you want to create a group, just click over here in group and create a group of user okay so I'll create one user a dummy user to log in into an AWS console you can import if you have a CSV you can import all the users I'll be creating manually so I'll give first name as Dave Ops last name as Mela and my user ID would be Dave Ops Mela okay email ID is mandatory so I'll use Dave Ops Mela at gmail.com I think this will be already been in used so I'll use devops rohit at devops mailer.com this is the email id which I will be using I'll specify the password itself over here itself specify the password again okay, if you want a multi-factor authentication you can do it from here user group I'll add this user to my user group that's SAML group which we have created 
I'll save. So a user is created named DevOps Mela and the email address is DevOps Rohit at DevOpsMela.com. We have created an AWS application to Okay, that is DevOps Mela SAML and we have a SAML group created. Okay, so we have successfully configured Jump Cloud. So let's move on to a service provider. So in our case, uh, AWS is our service provider. So let's configure AWS now. So I'm already logged in on my AWS console. So you would need an administrative access in order to configure AWS. Okay, because we would be adding an identity provider in IAM role and we'll be adding a role to for it. So let's click on IAM and click on identity providers. I'll click and I'll create a new provider. Choose the provider type. So we are using SAML. Provider name would be Jump Cloud. You can name it whatever you want. So I'm just giving a reference at Jump Cloud. I'll choose the XML file which we have exported from Jump Cloud. So before I click next, let's go and check what the what the file contains, the XML file contains. So the most important thing it contains the X509 certificate, which creates a trust relation between the IDP and the service provider. And it has the IDP URL which we created DevOps Mela. Okay. And there are uh, other key information as well the key descriptor key info okay so let's go back to AWS click next create so we successfully created a jump cloud identity provider in AWS so let's create a role for SAML so we have created but what authorization rules we want to provide so let's create click on create role select saml 2.0 federation select the saml provider which we just created so we want to provide a console access okay so we'll click next what permission you want to provide you can select the permissions so i'll be giving administrative access to devops mela user id I click administrative access if you want to give any tags you can just give it as name I'll name it as SAML jump cloud next I'll name it as SSO I'll name name this role as SSO that's single sign on so I've given policy it's administrative access and the key value Click on create. See here we go. So we have successfully created the role and the identity provider. Two important things click on identity provider, click on jump cloud, copy this ARN. Open a notepad and just paste the ARN. And go back to roles. Scroll down. Click on SSO. Click on this ARN again. Copy this to. Okay, so we have con successfully configured AWS, but the most important thing we have to update the right ARNs. Now go back to Jump Cloud, log in back, go back to application. Select your application. This is this was our application. Come back down. Okay, so this is constant attribute. We need to update this attribute right over here. Okay, so I have to replace this with the right values. Okay, so we got the role. We got the identity provider right over here. So we ensure we're informing the jump cloud 
so this is the right ARN to call for. I'll copy this. I'll replace this ARN with this ARN. I'll save it. I'll get the link to Okay, let's copy this IDP URL link. Okay, so we have successfully configured our Jump Cloud. We have configured our AWS console. So now let's test whether it's working fine or not. So I'm just clicking on, I'm opening this link which we have set. Our email ID was devops rohit at devopsmaila.com put my password let's log in so i was successfully logged in and i was redirected to my aws console okay so so this is this is the way you can log in using SAML and this was a SS single sign-in. So using this credentials and using this login ID, you can log into multiple applications. I'll show you that too. Let's come back, come back to Jump Cloud. Let's log out. The URL could be different. The IDP URL is different for all the applications. It would be totally dependent on you how you want to set. Let's sign out. So let me log in. As previously, I logged in using a admin credential. Now I'll log in using a user credential on Jump Cloud. So that was DevOps. Go ahead at DevOps Mela.com. I'll put my password. Okay. So now you see, we can see both my application. This is the one which we have created in this tutorial. This was my previous application. So it could be anything. It could be a Salesforce. It could be Google Suite. It could be any of your internal application. Okay. So we successfully created a SAML SSO using IDP Jump Cloud and a service provider, AWS. So if you guys like this video, please share and comment and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.